Can I be honest? Dare I say, can I really get this off my chest? They are boring. I feel like we gave it too much credit. Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be talking about fall fashion trends. And can I be all the way honest? I usually don't look up trends. I usually pick up on the trends because I'll just happen to see a bunch of people wearing the same thing and I start seeing the same things in the stores and I'm like, okay, that's trending. But this time around, I took my time. I looked up all the trends for myself and for you guys. So I got you guys covered and there's a lot. There's a whole bunch. So go ahead, grab your stacks, get comfortable, do all the things and we'll jump in real soon. So real, real quick, I want to share with you guys some of my music favorites, things that I've had on repeat currently because I just had to share it. So for one, if you haven't already heard Back on 74 by Jungle, I feel like you've been on the rock. Like it's been everywhere. But if you listen to it, you also have to watch the music video or see people's choreographies to it because it's such a feel good song. For me, there's no way it comes across my timeline that I can't sit and watch the entire thing. And I also can't help but smile when I listen to it. So check out Back on 74 by Jungle. See if you like that sound. My second one, I have to talk about Victoria Monet. Now Vicky, she's not new to this. She's been giving us song after song, writing hits and a nice little boom cat cat so i'm really loving her momentum right now she recently just dropped jaguar 2 everyone is going crazy for oh my mama granted the whole album has hits because it has lucky day i believe earth wind and fire is on it one of the songs that i really like is all right give all right a try all right gives me the vibes of hey Tranada. hey Tranada, i think it's hey Tranada. it feels like he produced it like it gives me his vibes even if it's not him and if anything i feel like if you were to take any of janet jackson's dance breaks and overlay all right on top it would mesh perfect check out jaguar 2 by victoria monet if you haven't already and to round this up if you guys did not know i love the high life sound so jules baby just released i believe it's an album or ep palm wine diaries there's someone who's not familiar with high life maybe you like jazz maybe you like a good instrumental if you want to get that feel go and listen to the very last song palm wine rhythm that gives you all the vibe it makes me feel like i'm on somebody's island on vacation near the water and just relaxing so if you're not familiar with high lifestyle i would say check out that album too but i just wanted to give you guys those three pieces of music that i've been loving so much so if you are new here my name is UD. i go by UD on the glow here on my other social media platforms so make sure you subscribe to me turn on that bell go ahead and like this video do all the things and follow me on my other social media platforms but back to today's video today we are talking about fall trends and i did my deep dive into the runway into the vlogs into these youtube streets to see what people were talking about and since we're on this tip of being honest there are so many trends that are popular this season that i feel like are staple pieces so a lot of what i'm gonna go over is gonna already be in your closet i can guarantee you you have at least a few or a couple of these pieces but on the flip side if you do decide to try out some of these trends if you pick your items well a lot of these trends you can use for staples in the future so get prepared get comfortable do all the things so as we go through these i'm going to be sharing my thoughts a couple styling tips here and there and i really want this to be a dialogue to know what you guys also think about these trends with lots of talk about recession core back to the office back to basics there's been a heavy emphasis on functionality and versatility we're, we're kind of like leaving those maximus trends and going more to minimal trends just as a reflection of the economy so a lot of these trends are great pieces to play around with that can become staple pieces in your wardrobe if you are able to pick quality long-lasting items however there are so many do not feel tempted do not feel pressured do not feel overwhelmed to have to do them all because it's a lot so starting off we have the wool maxi coat i've been seeing this trending in black and for me this is a straight staple piece and also a function of the season you want a thick coat as it starts to get colder so for me it's nothing new here there's not much thrill however i think it's good to have a good black wool coat in your closet now if anything if you guys remember when the wool camel coat came out and everybody was wearing the camel coats with the black turtlenecks underneath now that's a trend i feel like came with such a big wave and so much more excitement than just your basic black coat but with the black coat training i feel like this would be a great staple piece to have in your wardrobe and you'll be able to wear years from now so if you don't have one i would say be on the lookout for one if you want to try one out if you already have your black wool coat or you want to switch it up this would be a good time to 
play with texture and exaggeration. So play with something that probably has padded shoulders or if you wanna switch it up and kind of give that matrix look, go for something in a leather finish. I feel like as long as you have that black overcoat, you'll be able to wear it in many different ways. So this trend is not bad, but I already consider it a staple piece. Next up, we have peplum. And I feel like we loved us a good peplum in the early 2000s. Like we wore it out because we thought it was flattering on all body types. However, dare I say, I don't think the peplum was flattering on everybody. I feel like we gave it too much credit. If something was off, whether it was in the seam placement or the length and proportion of the frill or that ruffle, I feel like it was not always flattering on any body type. It could actually make you look bigger. So with peplum, I feel like it's very important to pay attention to where the seams hit you, the proportions of the frill. Not all peplums are created equal and not all are flattering in my opinion. I feel like I need to see a refreshed version of the early 2000s version for it to really catch my eyes and excite me. So for instance, I've seen some partial peplums where kind of like the bottoms go straight down. You have the frills more so on the side. I feel like that positioning of the frills and volume on the side can work to make your waist look smaller and kind of give you a little bit more of that hourglass shape. For the seasons we're moving into, I feel like we're going to see more peplums with lower waistlines. And we're also going to see more partial peplums that may not go all the way around, but add that volume to still give you that illusion of a smaller waist. I've also been seeing more split peplums where there may be buttons or a zipper in the front that kind of open up at the bottom. Bottom, and that kind of adds to that slimmer waist illusion. But let me know, will you be dusting off your peplums or are you gonna pass on this trend? Personally, I'm gonna give some of the newest styles a try. So next up on trends, I've been seeing lots of sculpted busts. With that, we've had a lot of cutouts and exaggerations at the cups of a bodice. And honestly, I'm all here for it. As long as the tatas are supported, lifted, and secured, Everything's copacetic in my opinion. In terms of styling, I feel like you can wear a blouse or turtleneck underneath a top, a dress, or whatever garment you have. And I feel like that falls into another trend of seeing videos where people are talking about wearing versus styling. Along with that, I feel like it's a function of the season. Having those multiple layers are gonna keep you warm. But going that extra mile, I feel like it adds a layer of comfort, but also a layer of edge. So if you're not comfortable with your arms out, throw a shirt right underneath. Or if it's going to be cold out, throw a shirt underneath. Or if you just want to do something different and style your pieces instead of wear them, throw that turtleneck or that blouse right underneath and go about your business. And with the sculpted tops, I feel like these call for statement jewelry. These call for the hair to be pulled back. Either you're wearing big chunky earrings or you're wearing a necklace, but something to really showcase all the exaggeration, all the extraness of the top. And I've seen some great takes from Alexander McQueen and a few other designers from the most recent fashion week. I'll share those on the screen. Next up, we have blazers. Blazers are yet another staple piece in any wardrobe. For me, I feel like you're covered once you have a black blazer and maybe one other that may be a color, maybe a print. I'm currently wearing my dad blazer in Glen plaid easy. As far as blazers go with the runway, I've been seeing a lot of emphasis with applique and embroidery added to the chest and shoulders of blazers. So once you have your basics out the way, then I would say you could probably dabble into some things that have a little extra bedazzle on them. So it's not your basic blazer. It's a little bit more elevated, a little bit extra, more of a statement piece. In terms of styling, I feel like that 90s celebrity airport fit look is really the way to go. Very easy. Kind of like what I'm wearing now. Throw on your blazer. You can throw on a simple one white t-shirt and throw on some nice fitted jeans whether they be mom jeans dad jeans something that's like easy to go about your business and if not the jeans you can probably throw on a simple trouser you'll still look put together and it'll give that effortless look and honestly it's an easy go-to when you don't know what to wear but you want to look like you did a little bit extra so it's a little old faithful for me also in blazers i've been seeing a lot of hourglass silhouettes and cropped and collarless jackets with that we're going to segue into hourglass overall Right now, what's really trending is that tailoring at the waist, whether it be a blazer or a long line coat, that really cinches you in and gives you that shape. And along with cinching you in at the waist, having those padded and oversized exaggerated shoulders really add to that hourglass illusion. So now is really the time to bring out any belts you have, whether they're thin belts, waist belts, thick belts, whatever the case may be, throw that on top of your jacket or your blazer and it's gonna bring that waist in and give you that hourglass look. Now is also the time to bring out your belt bags or any mini crossbody bag you have just play around the strap and see how it looks on the waist in terms of bringing you in to get you that shape now when it comes to crop jackets my biggest advice here is to tread lightly tread lightly you have to pay attention to fit i personally feel like if the fit is off a short jacket will shorten you 
literally shorten your height and also kind of age your look. So let, let's not do that because it's real easy to give mariachi band without the mariachi swag. Real quick, real bad. So tread lightly. The easiest way to go about styling a crop jacket, in my opinion, is to wear a high waist straight leg pant. Whether they're trousers or jeans, it's something about that straight leg that's gonna balance out the cropness of the jacket. Because that crop is gonna chop up your length, but I feel like the pants will elongate your legs and thus even it out. If I were to go for a crop jacket, we're not gonna keep it basic over here. I would go with something that was perhaps quilted or get a classic tweed look that, that probably has a frayed hem or go for a cardigan look. I feel like the crop jacket is easier to wear and is a little bit more excited when it's worn as a statement piece. But again, I can't stress this enough. Pay attention to proportions and fit when it comes to crop jackets if you're gonna be trying them out. So next up in general, I just have skirts. I was seeing a lot of volume and circle skirts floating around and the vibe has kind of been giving me a nod to the fashions of the 50s and 60s. But also in skirts, denim is carrying on, especially in the maxi length. But are we even surprised? Like denim is that girl. Denim is so versatile. So of course you'll be able to transition it throughout the season. What I haven't enjoyed is seeing a blazer cinched at the waist over a midi or maxi skirt that has that volume at the bottom. I was watching someone's video here on YouTube. I can't remember her name but she did it so well if i can find her video again i'll insert the picture next up we're going to segue into footwear i've been seeing a lot of knee and thigh high boots for me these are staple pieces that are already in your closet or maybe you want to get some and also functions of the season this is not surprising me at all you want to bring out your boots when it gets cold i've always felt like these are super cute but for me i have thicker calves so usually for me the real cute boots often don't fit or are not super comfortable i know you can get leather stretch but some of them there's only so much stretching you can do before you destroy the shoe so i'll be on the lookout for wide calf friendly boots if i can find any because even those those be on a small side too so this is a trend that I personally enjoy, but often I can't find things that fit me in this trend. And to get a bit more detailed and specific, riding boots and cowboy boots, those are classics in my opinion, and those are things that are going to persist despite this being a trend. You can always pull those out. You can always wear those. So next up, we're going to talk about ballet flats, mainly the rounded toe ballet flats. And I just wanted to get something off my chest. Like, I feel like we created a safe space here. Like, we're being honest anyway. Ballet flats are boring. I just had to say that. Oh my God. I feel so much better. Let me get a drink. They are boring. Ugh. The rounded toe ballet flats do not excite me in the least bit. They are such a boring shoe to me. The only time that I'm okay with seeing them around, if you happen to be out, you have your heels, you know your feet are gonna hurt and you don't wanna end up walking barefoot. So you're like, let me put these unsupportive shoes in my purse, crinkle them up. So just in case when I'm leaving, I have something to change into. I do not care for rounded toe ballet flats in the least bit. They are too simple. They are too boring to me. However, I will give it to them. I've been seeing people spice them up a little bit by adding a little strap over the foot. And I guess this could be a sub trend or micro trend. I don't know. But I feel like that strap over the foot kind of gives it a Mary Jane feel. And I feel like I've been seeing more and more Mary Jane style out on the market and trending. If you guys happen to follow Tashira from Fashion and Politics, you already know what I'm going to say. One of her opinions is that the rounded toe ballet flat looks like little girl church shoes. You know, the ones that little girls wear with like the frill socks. I completely agree. But what I have been seeing more of is more of a squared toe, less rounded, that looks more like a ballet point shoe. Now that... I'm all here for. I've also been seeing some play of where the shoe cuts off on the foot. So instead of kind of like seeing that toe cleavage or that curve right by where the toes end, I've been seeing that pushed up more along the foot. I'm here for that. It's something different. It's not as basic. And I feel like that just adds a little seasoning because the rounded toe is just bland. It's, it's too bland. Oh my God. And while we're on it, one thing about Jack Moose, Jack Moose marketing is amazing. So I did happen to come across some of their marketing for ballet flats and I absolutely love it. It really gets the concept across and I just wanted to share it here. And some months back, I came across this shoe from Topshop. I was hoping it would come back in stock, but it never did. And as you can see, it still kind of has that rounded toe, but it isn't as round. But in terms of the ballet flat look, I would go for that. So to round up this little section, the traditional rounded toe ballet flat, it makes me think of unsupported feet. I need something that's gonna pizzazz it up if I'm personally trying this trend. Now, if you and your ballet flats, keep wearing your shoes, girl, cause I'm not trying to come for you. But for me, I need a little extra pizzazz. Like I need some excitement. I'm just saying, you know, can I just say what I gotta say? 
anyway so next i want to talk about the sling back kitten heel one thing about me me and my kitten heels are always gonna be okay you can never shame me about kitten heels you can never do that to me it's something about that sling bag that gives your look an extra edge same with some kitten booties that i've been seeing it gives comfort but it gives you a little something extra a little bit like okay she got a little twang in there it's like comfort that's made edgy and if anything i see a lot of this with prada has some great sling back heels i was recently watching nori ann for one of her engagement parties and i saw one of the newer designs with the floral takes on it and i thought it was cute so seeing that smaller heel even if it's a wedge that sling back is gonna give you a little extra edge to your look that court heels won't necessarily do i feel like those are more serious less edgy more more business professional but i feel like the sling back is more versatile it can be worn on professional occasions or in streetwear you just have a lot more wiggle room and a lot more fun and i feel like a lot more comfort too that's my personal opinion if you got your sling bags and you got your kitten heels one thing we stand as one no one can shame us for our kitten heels and that's all i'm gonna say about it okay so moving away from shoes we're getting into accessories with large scarves this is another staple for me if you don't have your scarf go ahead and get you a scarf and have it in your closet ready to wear with these the blanket or the shawl like scarves are definitely going to keep you warm and you play around with volume and draping it across your body to give you different shapes and looks so moving into patterns i've been seeing a lot of florals a lot of plaids and a lot of other patterns so all these i feel like are easy to already own and have in your closet when it comes to florals one of the things i do is i pay attention to scale sometimes you want those large prints of flowers to give you a certain look and sometimes you want those smaller prints of flowers with the smaller florals sometimes from far away you can't necessarily see if it's a flower and sometimes i hear these referred to as like ditzy print for me i feel like the smaller pattern is like the most versatile but it shouldn't be something that limits you or holds you back from trying larger prints play around see what's best for you and your wardrobe and from the one way i've been seeing more larger scale florals but also i've been seeing some 3d dimensional and texture takes on it especially from balmain and back to plaids these are super easy to do you have like the tartan look i'm used to seeing those in red but it comes in other colors you have glen plaid like the blazer i'm wearing today you also have buffalo style some people consider that gingham print to also be plaid so those are some plaids another print not to forget i've been seeing a lot of pinstripes and I'm not mad at them. Do I currently own? I don't think I own any pinstripe right now. But I feel like it really matches that back to the office feeling. But actually, let me know. Do you currently have something that's pinstripe in your closet? Or are you going to be trying out this trend and picking up some pinstripe items here and there? Off the top of my head, I saw some beautiful looks from Scaparelli and a few others in terms of pinstripes. I feel like if I find the perfect piece that calls my name, I might need to hop on and get it. Because why not um, so next in terms i'm just gonna group together fruits and animation i feel like i've seen a lot of this from the way they and from coat and whenever i see them that are more out there i myself i'm not necessarily the target audience for these items however i feel like this is great marketing towards the children and teens of parents who can afford it and already like the brands it's also really good for people who just enjoy animation altogether. though i would say this trend is not necessarily for me i have seen a few exceptions done to my liking like a couple bananas or cherries tossed here and there I never heard nobody i feel like when it looks more like a print and less like the individual item that works for me like in previous seasons i've seen Prada do like their banana print and it lovely kind of reminds me of that one josephine baker performance so i'm not too mad at it and i've also seen this farm rio kind of take on that theme where way it's more elevated it's more sophisticated so in those cases i don't mind it too much but for me there's a fine line between what i like and don't like if you have any two cents to add in here let me know what you think on the fruits and animated trends do you think it's a trend that can grow and become bigger or do you think it's one that just has its niche audience next up i want to talk about metallics we started seeing metallics throughout the summer and it's definitely going to continue into fall and into the winter. I think the best thing to do with metallics is to keep an elevated approach. Look for things that you can wear multiple ways and look for things that are made and crafted well that don't give a cheap or poorly made look. So I've been seeing a lot of statement gold and silver, especially with the mirrored look, the Renaissance tour coming to an end and with some of Coach's recent releases. But in the world of metallics, I would challenge you to make room and push forward into age metals too like your bronzes and your gun metals and also if colors your thing play with teals red oranges greens play around with those as other statement pieces whether you're wearing it as an accent or a pop of color to your look or you're actually color blocking with it you know you can do that too so don't limit yourself when it comes to metallics you find yourself 
going towards only a mirrored look, play around with a bronze. If you're only in a bronze age look, play around with color if you want to try something new. Trends are here to try. So if you have the time and the means to do it, just play around. So next up in textures, I've been seeing a lot of sheer looks. And there are many ways to go sheer. You can do it through mesh, net, lace, chiffon, taffeta, all of those things. But I feel like this is really the time to showcase layering based on the season. So you can play around with your camisoles and undergarments underneath sheer material or play around with sheer materials underneath your coats and jackets. There's a lot to be done here. Now moving out of textures and back to garments, next up we have the no pants look. I feel like this is like a cousin to the hot pants and Daisy Dukes. It usually is like an underwear brief look. And I often see these paired with sheer tights. So what are our thoughts on this? Are you guys trying this out? And if you're trying it out, where are you going when you try it out? Are you like getting groceries? Are you going to the bank? Are you running errands? I feel like it has a time and a place, but I feel like I can really only see it in settings that revolve around fashion alone, but not necessarily in day-to-day -day, everyday places. That's my thinking on it. Let me know what you think on these. Next up, we have shoulder action. As I kind of hinted at before, we've been seeing a lot of exaggerated and padded shoulders, but also to add, I've been seeing a lot of off-the-shoulder bardo, a lot of those kind of look. And honestly, a little shoulder never hurt nobody. So if you can go the shoulders out, I say go for it. And as mentioned before, I've been seeing a lot of applique and detail and embroidery at the shoulders, as well as very voluminous and exaggerated shoulders. So that's what's going on in the shoulders. I saw somewhere someone mentioned chunky knits and turtlenecks as trends. I personally feel like these are also staple pieces that we should already have in our wardrobes. If you don't, get you a couple and also functions of the season. Why wouldn't you want to wear a turtleneck when it's cold? Why wouldn't you want chunky knits when it's cold? So some of these trends are just like, it's, we already got them. But now let's begin my favorite of the trends, which are colors of the season. So of the colors I've been seeing, red, chartreuse, and buttered yellow. Let's start with red. First and foremost, I'm always gonna make it clear there are different types of red. You have a blue red and you have a strawberry red. And I do two different things with them. When it comes to strawberry red, it's more of an orange red. I love color blocking with that. But when it comes to that bold cherry Bordeaux red, this is something that I do not play around with. And I've been seeing this red also supported with burgundies and maroon colors to kind of give you that monochrome look. But as I said, this is a color I do not tamper with. It is bold, it is out there, it does its thing on its own, so I don't wanna take away from any of that. So the few routes I take when I'm styling this cherry red, we can keep it monochrome. I'm just adding different shades of red. I'm throwing in my burgundies, my maroons, to kind of get those different shades. If I'm not doing that, what I can do is complement the color. And I will only do this with the basics, your white, your black, and your something neutrals. When it comes to neutral, that can be any Anything from beige to brown and I will even throw in khaki those are the only colors that I, I will let kind of like clash with that cherry red those are the colors I use when I want that red to stay at the forefront and I don't want to take away from its boldness and maybe I can throw in a buttered yellow I've heard some people say that kind of gives the feel of a neutral as well that I would tread lightly. So next in colors, I've been seeing a lot of that chartreuse green. For me personally, I feel like it's a year round color. It's a color that I love and enjoy. I have one chartreuse dress. And if you have been watching my videos, you know the one I have worn that dress to death. I love how it looks on my skin tone. But because of that, I actually wouldn't mind adding a few more chartreuse pieces to my closet because I'm in love with the color. And with that color being so rich, I feel like the texture that you get it in, it can really take it in different directions. Like if you have a satin or sheen finish versus something that's more on the wool or matte side, it's gonna give you different vibes. Now I haven't seen much talk about khaki and sage, but I feel like those along with that olive color, also things that we're gonna see more and more of as the season progresses into winter. And especially since cargoes are still going strong and that utility look often comes up in colder months. Next we have buttered yellow. What are we thinking about this? Buttered yellow makes me think of buttered chicken and I'm like, have I had buttered chicken? I don't know. But regardless, I am personally all here for it. Some have described this buttered yellow color as another neutral and some have described it as a temporary replacement for that boring beige. But for me, that pale yellow is always nostalgic. It gives a vintage feel and it's always calming and relaxing for me. So I'm all here for it. Are you here for it? Are you gonna grab you a couple pieces in that buttered yellow? I have a few, but I don't mind adding a couple more. Next up, we have denim on denim continued. Like I said, denim is that girl. Why wouldn't she be? For the cooler months, I tend to focus on darker washes of denim. And I think the biggest thing too, especially when you're wearing Canadian suits of that denim on top, denim on bottom, that is the time to really focus on your accessories. Pay attention to having those statement accessories that really make the look pop. 
So we went over a lot, but just to recap, we talked about silhouettes. I've noticed a heavy emphasis on hourglass and boxy looks. And there's this repeat emphasis on seeing sculpting, tailoring, power shoulders, oversized look. And these all kind of lean into the power suit look. We talked a little bit about texture. Think your wool, your leather, your chunky knits, your sheer fabrics, your metallic fabric. And within all these things, a good portion of them are just functions of the weather. You want things that are thicker and gonna keep you warm, but then you have a couple that you can play around with. Next, we talked about patterns. There's tons of florals, plaids, and pinstripe going on this season. And last but not least, we talked about color. Tons of red, tons of that green, whether it be chartreuse, olive, khaki, that's gonna be happening, as well as that buttered yellow color that can low key serve as a beige replacement or another neutral. So there's been lots of influence in the direction of the working girl, lots of exaggeration, especially with blazers, mimicking that return to office, and also an exaggeration mimicking the inflation that we're seeing in our economy. And with that, a lot of talk about back to basics, a lot of functionality, a lot of recession core going on. A lot of focus on having looks that are wearable, functional, and versatile. Something that I talk about a lot too. So in this video, I know we covered so much. And again, I do not want anyone to feel overwhelmed. I I do not want you to be taken aback and feel like you have to buy every trend. That is not what this is about. However, with so many of these trends being staple pieces, in my opinion, I feel like if you take your time getting the trends that you don't already own, that you don't already have in your closet, getting the things that you think can elevate your looks, getting the things that you think can play major roles in your closet or something that's just overall missing and you want to fill that void, if you really take your time and search out these pieces, these trends can become staples for your closet in the future, things that you'll be wearing years from now. So if you're getting a trend and it's a good staple piece, make sure you go for quality because you'll be able to wear it years from now when the trend is gone. As for me, a lot of these pieces I have in my closet and a couple I want to add too, but I don't feel obligated to run and buy everything and neither should you. So with all that said, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And let me know your thoughts on these trends. I really want this video to be a conversation and a dialogue amongst us. And keep telling your friends to tell a friend to tell a friend like telephone to also subscribe and share in the fun. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'll make sure I'll leave some videos on the screen for you guys to check out. But until next time, bye guys. And that's a wrap. Y'all, I ran out of storage on my camera. It's about to die. I'm trying to like this new background. Let me know what you think. This shadow is bothering the hell out of me. But anyway, I like some new techniques on my makeup. I don't know how it's coming across. On the lips, I bought American Doll. But this is my first time wearing it. I hope it's recording.